So the MediaTek X20 has a very interesting CPU inside its Helio X20 SoC. Now this CPU is not very interesting from the performance point of view but from the way they implement the ARM's big little architecture and heterogeneous computing system. Most SoC manufacturers and designers tend to implement two cluster architecture with one cluster dedicated to heavy tasks. In this case, the bigger cluster made up for performance cores like the A20, A72 and A73. And the second cluster aimed at power efficiency made up of cores such as the A53 and the A7. However, the Helio X20 has a tri-cluster architecture with a powerful, balanced and power-efficient core clusters. The balanced clusters are simply uh, the higher clocked versions of the power-efficient ones. Before we go further into the video, we must take a quick look at the different task scheduling methods implemented in the big little multiprocessing architecture. The first one being cluster switching. The clustered model approach is the first and simplest implementation arranging the processors into identically sized cluster of big or little. The operating system schedulers can only see one cluster at a time. When the load on the whole processor changes between high and low, the system transitions to the other cluster. All relevant data is then passed through the common L2 cache. The first core cluster is powered off and the other one is activated. A cache coherent interconnect or CCI is used. The second one being in kernel switcher or CPU migration. The CPU migration via the in kernel switcher involves pairing up a big core with a little core with possibly many identical pairs in one chip. Each pair operates as one virtual core and only one core is fully powered up and running at a time. The big core is used when the demand is high and the little core is employed when the demand is low. When demand on the virtual core changes between high and low, the incoming core is powered up, running state is transferred, the outgoing core is shut down and the processing continues on the new core. Switching is done via the CPU Freak framework. And finally, we have heterogeneous multiprocessing or global task scheduling. The most powerful use model of big little architecture is HMP or heterogeneous multiprocessing, which enables the use of all physical cores at the same time. Threads with high priority or computational intensity in this case can be allocated to the big cores, while threads with less priority or less computational intensity, such as background tasks, can be performed by the little ones. This is used by most modern ARM based processors that follow the big little architecture including the one we are using today, the Helio X20. The preferred way to control heterogeneous task scheduling so that it is effective in power savings is to disable individual cores that aren't being used. Uh, that is done using the CPU hot plugging feature that allows for OS uh, to individually turn off CPU cores. Luckily, the X20 has the hot plugging feature exposed and we can manually override it as it was discovered by a forum member at the 96 boards forum. So I thought about manually enabling all the cores would give us exponentially better scores on Geekbench multi-core benchmark. Well, let's take a look at what happens. So before we go ahead and enable all the cores, let's take a look at the status what is by default. First, we have the system monitor app that shows us some of the cores on and the other cores as offline. This is also reflected in the cat output of the status of all the cores. Next, we'll go ahead and disable automatic CPU hot plug and enable all the cores which can be seen reflected in the system monitor app. Now let's take a look at the benchmarks. Not what I expected at all. There is a difference. In fact, the multi-core score is higher than that of the Heike 960. But this is only because the extra cores that I enabled meant that background tasks were now being scheduled to these smaller cores instead of taking CPU time on the performance cores, which meant that the benchmark can, can now run more efficiently on the bigger cores, giving it slightly better result. 
but it was still running on the bigger cores and not all of the cores uh, as I expected it to. The global task scheduler only uses the hot plug feature as a means to turn off specific CPU cores that aren't in use and thereby save power, increasing efficiency and hence enabling those cores had next to no con considerable effect on the benchmark. So at the end, big little multiprocessing architecture is more geared towards power saving than it is towards pure performance. So when you see an octa core or deca core arm cpu in a device the peak performance would only be equal to its big cores but its peak power efficiency would be very close and equal to its little cores and finally a huge shout out to seed studio for providing me with the mediatek x20 to experiment on it and make more videos so that was it for today's video i hope you all enjoyed a look into arm's big little architecture thank you for liking commenting and subscribing and i'll see you all in the next one